Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Psychos and Sociopaths, we're going to talk about Ted K- K- Kaczynski, Ted the Unabomber. Kaczynski. Yeah, I, I Ted can't. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber who was a mathematics professor. Um, now, here's the thing about him, though. Did the government create him? Or was he starting, uh, w- was he on the pathway of becoming uh, this uh psycho you know i kind of want to think it maybe it was a little bit of both i think he maybe was one of these tinfoil hat guys yeah that just finally lost it because somebody from the government came around and said "Eh, we're trying to reach out to you about your car's extended warranty you know and i'm just you know that's "Mm." not what happened right you know he was in uh he was part of uh mk ultra yeah 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 and, okay. and for, for the people that don't know, MK Ultra was a government funded through CIA, CIA. to uh, develop mind control by using uh, LSD, PCP. LSD. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you're, and if you have seen the memes on our Facebook page, just one of them, I put it up. Because if your family, uh, if your family's poor, but you still want to uh, take a trip, and all of them like had a LSD little tab on their tongue. Do you see that one I posted today? <laughs> yes, that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, ha ha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm going to try to find it again because I love it. That is freaking hilarious. No. Uh, how many companies do you need? Remember that? Uh, remember when J- uh, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and a few years years later responded with two nukes? Yeah, this is just the first one. <laughs> yeah. So this meme, so so our listeners understand, um, it's Peter Griffin curled up in the fetal position, crying in a closet, and it's in reference. Uh, it's 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 I don't know. It, it's probably not legit, but um, Sony was tweeting this out because Microsoft announced yesterday that it purchased Activision Blizzard and King Studios. Yeah. So we're talking World of Warcraft, StarCraft. We're talking about Call of Duty. We're talking about Crash Bandicoot. We're talking about Spiro the Dragon PlayStation titles. And um, is, it, is it Spyro? I thought it was Spyro. Spyro, Spiro, Spyro. Um, and King is, uh, every white girl's favorite candy crush. Um, so now Sony, they, they took a a pretty substantial hit. Um, they lost a reported $20 billion in the stock market the day that Microsoft made that announcement. Um, Sony hasn't been having a good time here as of late because of all the chip shortages and the lack of availability for the PS5 console. So Sony fired up their production lines and started remanufacturing the PS4 and PS4 Pro that they had vowed to have killed because the new console was out. So Sony was taking a step back and then Microsoft said, you know what? Eh, okay, we're going to do this. And then they go out and buy Activision. And then immediately Bobby Kodak, um, the president and CEO of Activision, the one who has been responsible for just the travesty of, of, what has become the Call of Duty franchise immediately stepped down. Mm. So in other words, we might very likely start to see Call of Duty titles that are worth a damn. Yeah, they haven't really been. And what's really strange about this whole thing, and it's like, why are they talking video games, talking about the Unabomber? Tech is it, because Zinsky. I'll just say the Unabomber. I'll just say the Unabomber. Just call him Uncle Ted. Yeah, Uncle Ted. Uh, The Unabomber actually made a manifesto just like 300. It was was 300 pages, right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, And he basically said our entertainment uh, industry is going to be the downfall of our entire society. I mean, he's a crackpot. And it might have been the LSD because... They didn't. They didn't really. Pretty much, they they pretty much like heavily dosed those people. And yeah, I mean, because this guy went. He, I mean, he studied complex analysis at the University of California, Berkeley, 
Yeah, um, and he also oh he was uh, he was an alumni of Harvard for a while. Mm-hmm. He uh, eventually made it to Berkeley. Uh, uh, he also went to Michigan State, uh, which he has a doctorate from Miss, uh, Michigan. 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 Michigan State. Words not good. Uh, but anyways, he was a freaking heavily intelligent person. Uh, yeah. But he was up there for uh, of the intelligence of our uh, voice for uh, figuring out words, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. I mean, he even did his, his, his doc- uh, doctoral advisor. Yeah. Um, Alan Shields. Uh, he's a, a mathematician who worked on measure theory, complex analysis. Uh, functional analysis and the operator theory and it was one of the world's leading authorities on space on on spaces of analytic functions so i mean he had some good guidance i mean this dude his iq must have been off the charts yeah it was 100 and i think 160 150 well still i mean yeah it was it was beyond that's 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 low-key genius right there yeah it was beyond the point of normalcy so you know but um it just yeah. i mean if it wasn't for the fact that I, I forget hold on i know i know they had to use a game warning to catch him but he basically the bombs that he used uh he set it up to where i mean he did this for 20 years and they didn't find him out until for like 20 years uh, 167 was his uh his iq test yeah but he had a heavy mathematical career uh the bombs were uh he uh you know bomber usually uh mailed or hand delivered a series of uh uh increasing god there's another word Hold on. let me get the Stephen Hawking voice. Sophisticated. Oh, God. My mind wasn't working. Uh, increasingly sophisticated bombs that community killed three people and injured 23 others. Uh, 16 bombs were uh, attributed to... Con- uh, is attributed. That attributed. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'm tired. Attributed to K- K- Kaczynski. While the bombing devices varied widely through the years, the uh, main contained the initials FC, which Kaczynski later said stood for Freedom Club, uh, inscribed on parts inside. He purposely left misleading clues in the device and, uh, devices and took extreme care in preparing them to avoid leaving fingerprints. Fingerprints found on some of the devices did not uh, match those found on letters attributed to oh God uh, to Kaczynski. Now, <clears throat> that's what he's known for. He's known him for mailing in bombs and everything and uh, blowing up post office boxes. And the, it wasn't just the United States. It was also some of our allies. But he, he was... It was really strange. He had a decent childhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, even his family were worried that he was uh, unsociable. And eventually he became sociable and everything. But it, you notice a big change in, in all the... You, you notice some like little things that were, okay, he might be a little bit, bit off. I mean, he was... He was in a chess club. He was in a mathematics club. He was he was trying to be sociable, and he did so, uh, become sociable. But it was at MK Ultra that really, because okay, going back on what MK Ultra is, uh, it was developed by a uh, professor. Uh, let me find his name. Uh, da, 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 yeah. Let me get some super uh, MK. Oh, no, wait, there we go. It's 
one that's kind of freaky that it was a band. Uh, no. Okay. God damn it. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to man. I I should have had this all all up beforehand. Uh, huh. Project MK Ultra. There we go. Yeah. You had to, you had to put in Project because of the band. Yeah. Uh, it was a code name for uh, illegal human experimentation. Let me find the guy because he was also a he worked for the okay. No. Uh, Stephen Kenser. Uh According to, okay, this is according to author Stephen Kinster, uh, the CIA project was a con uh, uh, continuation of work begun in World War II era uh, Japanese facility and Nazi concentration camps on <clears throat> sub during the controlling of human minds. Kinster wrote uh, that MK Ultra used uh, masculine? Yeah. Uh, basically, mescaline. it's mescaline. It's a uh, basically, uh, uh, yeah, known for uh, L LSD and uh, some other stuff. Uh, but the project head by Stanley, let me get his last name, Gotoberg. Mm -hmm. Uh, but begun on orders of CIA director at the time, Alan Duels, on April 13, 1953, its aimed was to develop mind controlling drugs for use against Soviet bloc uh, in response of uh, allegedly Soviet and Chinese in North Korea using mind control techniques on U.S. prisoners during the uh, during uh, the Korean War. The CIA wanted to use a similar method on their own captives and was uh, interested in manipulating foreign leaders with such techniques. Uh, several schemes to drug uh, Fidel Castro. It often conducted experiments without the subjects knowing or consent. In some of the cases, uh, academic researchers were funded through grants from the CIA uh, front organizations, but were unaware that the CIA was using their work uh, for the uh, these processes, most the uh, MK Ultra records were destroyed in 1973 in order of the CIA direct, director at the time, Richard Helms. So it was. It's been difficult for investigators to gain a complete understanding of more than 150 funded research uh, sub projects sponsored by MK Ultra and related CIA programs. But that's what ended up happening with Ted Kaczynski. God, I can't Kaczynski. Even say that. I can't say that last name. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use Unabomber throughout the whole thing. I'm trying to be smart, but I can't be smart sometimes. My brain. Yeah, don't he work. had a total. Uh, the I mean, the convictions were ten counts of transportation, mailing, and use of bombs. Three counts of murder. Um, resulted in eight consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. I mean, <clears throat> he he was actually spotted um, planting a bomb in, in Salt Lake City. So he took a six-year break. And uh, he mailed a bomb to the home of Charles Epstein. Um, University of California, uh, from uh, the University of California, San Francisco, 
This guy lost several fingers upon opening the package. In the same weekend, Kaczynski mailed a, a bomb to David Geltner, mm -hmm. a computer science professor at, at Yale. Geltner lost an eye or sight in one eye, hearing in one ear, and a portion of his right hand. Uh, 1994, uh, Burson Marsteller, executive Thomas Moser, was killed after opening a mail bomb sent to his home in New Jersey. In a letter to the New York Times, Kaczynski wrote he had sent the bomb because Moser's work repairing the public image of Exxon after the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, this was followed by the 95 murder of uh, Gilbert Brent Murray, president of the Timber Lobbying Group, California Forestry Association, by a mail bomb addressed to the previous president, William Dennison, who had retired. Um, and geneticist Philip Sharp at the at, at MIT received a threatening letter shortly afterwards. So we're looking at a total from May 25th of 78 to April 24th of 95. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, you know, 14 letters or bombs. Um, two of them exploded. I mean, two of them did not explode because they were diffused. The one that was sent to the Boeing company in Auburn, Washington, mm -hmm. that one was diffused, and the one at the University of Utah was diffused. Um, and on uh, November 15th of 79, uh, he had actually had a bomb put on American Airlines Flight 444 from Chicago to Washington, D.C., the explosion happened mid-flight, but because of a faulty detonator, there was no explosion per se with the explosive. It just put off a lot of smoke, and it caused the plane to um, conduct an emergency landing. Now, there were 12 passengers that um, were treated for smoke inhalation, but that that was it. But, I mean, they when they examined the bomb, um, they, it had enough explosive in it to just disintegrate the plane in mid-flight yeah and uh um, <clears throat> what was real I, what i was looking up while he was talking about that is i watched this movie uh god what was that movie it was a john C cusack movie uh Being john malkovich no no it was uh <laughs> that was a cool movie though it was weird i but it was could a cool never movie. get into that in, into that movie it was uh where he's like a famous actor and he's uh uh there we go it, it, the whole movie was great and they had a lot of stars in it talking about memento no but another great movie yeah but memento was a uh, John Cusack wasn't in it. I thought he was. No. Talk about the one that's got the multiple personalities. Because no, that's another good one too. He was in that one. Yeah, he was the therapist and everything on that one. No. No. God, I can't. It was like a rom-com i mean I'll, american sweethearts there we go no oh, yeah i never watched it <laughs> it was it was it's was, it's really good it is really good but there's this part where is that the one with Catherine zeter jones yeah yeah no i never saw it it's really good you gotta watch it it's so funny i think the funniest part is when the rottweiler is like uh chewing on billy chris's balls okay but uh no there's this part of the movie where uh christian walken's character they talk about it's like you know that he he bought the unabomber's uh cabin that's where he edits all of his uh movies now and i got curious i was like wait a minute what happened to the universe cabin i think someone bought it because they sold everything in auction and the auction, uh, all of his stuff went for like two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. 
but it's mm-hmm. called a news museum in Washington, uh, D.C. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, it's anything that's freedom of the press that goes there. And they, they since Unabomber was a newsworthy, uh, they use it there as a uh, uh, museum piece. Hmm. So if you ever want to check out the Unabomber's cabin, go to Washington, D.C. to the museum. I'll put the link in the description. Cool. All right. So uh, he wrote a, you mentioned the, the manifesto. It was a 35,000 word essay, Industrial Society and Its Future, dubbed the Unabomber Manifesto by the FBI. Um, there was a, uh, he mailed several letters to the media outlets outlining his goals and demanding, demanding that the, a major newspaper publish this entire thing verbatim. Um, which they did it was what the new york times yeah something like that he stated he would desist from terrorism if his demand was met there was a there was controversy as to whether the essay should be published but it was washington post and the new york times yeah um janet reno and the fbi director louis freech or uh, free um recommended his publication out of concern for public safety and in the hope that a reader could identify the author uh, Bob Guccione of Penthouse volunteered to publish it. Kaczynski replied, Penthouse was less reputable than the New York Times and the Washington Post, and said that to increase our chances of getting our stuff published in some respectable periodical, he would reserve the right to plant one and only one bomb intended to kill after our manuscript had been published, if Penthouse published the, the document instead of the Times or the Post. Uh, the Post published the essay on September 19th of 1995. He used a typewriter to, to write his manuscript, capitalizing entire words for emphasis in lieu, uh, in, in lieu of uh, italics. Um, he always referred to himself as either we or FC, uh, though there is no evidence that he worked with others. Donald Wayne Foster analyzed the writing at the request of Kaczynski's defense team, or defense team in 96 and noted that it contained irregular spelling and hyphenation along with other linguistic uh, idiosyncrasies. This led him to conclude that Krasinski was its author. So, I mean, <clears throat> just because you don't physically touch something with your bare hand doesn't mean they can't track you. Yeah. Uh, another thing on that is, um, uh, and if i get i'm so glad that we're not like super high up but as soon as all all of our stuff like becomes like super big we're gonna get uh knocked down but he was actually uh he said in an interview the only way i'm gonna be able to touch another woman after a while was to become one and it was it was kind of strange kind of thinking and everything like that Hmm. uh that that's the train See, of nowadays, thought. Nowadays, everybody's like, oh, "Oh, that's normal." Yeah. Uh, how we, we have, but and I'm going to say this, and this is going to be the thing that gets us canceled. But how far have we fallen as a society? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's getting weird out there. It's dude, it's ridiculous. Well, and we'll, we got to reemph. Because I've I've done so many. Well, so many. We only done like uh, I think 176 episodes, but uh, four or five of them have been over woke culture, and I keep on talking about it because it's just ridiculous. They 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 band together hoping to, and this is more allude to our social media standing now to the fact of if Ted Kaczynski was uh, look at you, you said his name right, yeah. If he was actually, and I will ruin it now forever since you congratulated me. My brain's like, oh, no, we're supposed to switch to the fuck off. Uh, But in in lieu of all that, in social media now, he would actually probably had like a big following and everything. And what's really sad is he was totally uh, uh, anti-technology and everything, but he would probably gotten his word across like more prominently now how's the saying go you uh (sighs) 
what is it? You, 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 you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. Yeah. You know, I mean, he would, I, I, I completely see him in today's world embracing the culture that he absolutely despised. Oh yeah. In order to get his message I was, across. I was totally, I was totally thinking that, uh, because in, in the long run and everything like that, he was, he, I mean, in an interview uh, of talking of how he was going to survive and everything was the basic fact of he went out, lived in the cabin and everything. And he said, I'm going to either die in this cabin or I'm going to survive. And when I survived, yeah. and that's when he ended up starting killing people. See, he critiques civil civilization as we knew it then um, to this thing called uh, anarcho primitivism. Yeah. Um, it's a political ideology, um, an anarchist critique of civilization that advocates the return to non civilized ways of life through deindustrialization, abolition of division of labor or special specialization, and the abandonment of a large scale organization in high technology. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it kind of goes on to, you know, critique the organs or organs origins and, and the progress of the industrial revolution and in industrial society. Um, so according to that train of thought, the, the shift from hunter gatherer to agricultural substance during the Neolithic revolution, which I'll get into here in just a second, gave rise to coercion, social alienation, and social stratification. So when we're talking about Neolithic revolution, it's, it, it, it's talking about the first agricultural revolution. Um, it was when the, the, we saw the first wide scale uh, transition of many human cultures during the Neolithic period um, from a lifestyle of hunting and gathering to one of agricultural or agriculture and, and settlement. Um, and, and it really kind of gave rise to the ability of us to kind of settle and build large cities. And it was kind of like the springboard forward from like, Hey, we're going to stop living in caves now to and we're going to set up villages and we're going to set up towns and hamlets and, and, and eventually we're going to set up cities. And the larger the gathering of people, the, the odds of somebody having an idea that is going to make an advancement for humankind went up exponentially. So, um, but he, uh, I mean, he, he rejected and criticized anarchist primitive or primitivist uh, views. So yes. I mean, e even though even though his critiques bore a lot of the same similarities, he really he just he he I, I guess he couldn't see the forest for the trees, and I think that that was the ironic part of what he was trying to accomplish. Yeah. Because he was always talking about how modern society, social media, well, back then the rise of the infants, excuse me, the infancy, infancy of social media. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, because well, you also gotta, were starting to become a thing on AOL. Well, uh, no, no, no. The, the thing about him, mm -hmm. it, his, okay, he was captured in the 90s. Yeah. He did all this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff, I mean, the chat rooms haven't been even available. But well, no, you're right. You're 80s, right. You're right. This, but the I mean, stuff in the 80s that we had was it was like the 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 minute stuff. I mean, we were only using the Internet for uh, business and, and business. military applications. Yeah. Very, very small. I mind minute stuff. And it wasn't until like the uh late 89 to start we started doing emails <clears throat> and it was only before big corporations and stuff like that and it might have been even sooner than that but he saw all this coming and he did not like it and and he he wanted to the point to where 
he wanted everybody to go back to the tricks. But he, here's the thing. It, it's kind of a, a tit for tat type deal. It, and this is just my thinking on this. Uh, there's a good thing for society to be in groups in, of people and everything and big cities and everything like that. You get a, a big development in art, uh, even in uh, medical advancement, because you got more minds working on a, the same problem. Th there's this website. I can't remember it now, but it, it's one of those uh, YouTube videos that I watch, but I just can't remember what it is. And it was a development of uh, sciences and not even sciences. Some of the people were just love puzzles. And it was, you know, making chemicals and stuff like that. And they were just attaching stuff and seeing if it would work. And the like mind of these people, what we have now, because we have uh, a vast information, we can make complex chemicals uh, faster because sometimes the person's not that bright, but they can come up with like, they like puzzles and they are you know, pretty good at them. Yeah. And that's how we get in a society of group minded where we have big cities and stuff like that. But it's, it's so sad to think that our lives would be better without the, all these advancements. I mean, yeah, we have, we have trolls, we have uh, people that their basic train of thought is so toxic, toxic that it develops some to other people which is really sad and that toxicity ends up bringing out the worst in everybody and a, and they get gathered up and they cause wokeness to where oh you have to think this way I'm like fuck you no i don't being woke and 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 i hate to break this to the woke crowd but uh being woke puts you just one bad day away from being a full-blown fascist. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said for independent thought, independent thinking, uh, independent behavior. Uh, I mean, because we are defined by our individualism. Uh, and at least it, in my opinion, we are. And while I am not taking away from the importance of relationships because, you know, no man is an island, period. And I say no man, I'm talking about humankind. I'm talking about human beings, homo sapiens, okay? Mm -hmm. We can't thrive by ourselves. I mean, we can't be gifted like Emerson. Uh, you know, Emerson was when he wrote, uh, oh crap, what was the, where he goes, <laughs> and now I feel incredibly stupid because I can't think of the name of that book that he wrote. Anyways, so. Well, what was I mean, his full name? Em Emerson, uh, Jesus Christ, hold on. Uh, Bowser? No. Now, um, self reliance, crap, my brain just completely Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yes, thank you. And it was the book, uh, self reliance, yes. nature, uh. Essays of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yes. Oh my God. Which which books? What books are you talking about? A book you talking about? Um. Don't 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 take my thunder away from me here. Um. Not trying to. Yes, and for those of you who noticed the very decided, um, pronounced um, dead air, that is me doing a research here, which is I should have done a little bit more in depth. Um, lip. 
I might take this away from me because I think I found it. But this is actually a good quote. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, in the book, uh, Self, Self-Reliance, it was basically, I'll say, by uh, Ralph Waldo uh, Emerson. Uh, the need for each individual to avoid confrontation and false consistency and no, follow his you know own. What it, is? it wasn't, it wasn't Emerson that I was, or Ralph Waldo Emerson. It, I, I, I was saying, thinking Emerson, I was thinking about, uh, um, Henry David Thoreau. He wrote a book called Walden. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, the, the premise of, of Walden, it, he, he basically just, he, he reflected upon living a simple life, um, work, uh, living in simple, uh, simple surroundings. Um, he, he is, it was kind of like a declaration of independence for himself. Um, but as he's going through, and it was a social experiment basically of the time kind of a thing. So it, it, even though he was trying to live the life of a hermit and trying to buck the trends of, of, of routine, he found himself, taking the same trails time after time after time after time because men human beings are creatures of habit yeah i don't i i try not to be a creature of habit only because training uh i mean military and correct as a correction officer you don't want to because if they know they're going to uh, do the same thing at this point well, yeah, time. I mean, because it, that, that breeds predictability and complacency. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, it, it, and we might be getting off track with this, but with, with Kaczynski, he, he was really wanting us to kind of get away from technology. He wanted us to go back to a more primitive mindset. And even though he was espousing these views, he was also the, de- you know, kind of like shirking them off. I mean, he was like, he was dismissing them as saying, no, this is not what I believe. Even though it was, it, it's what his 35,000 word uh, manifesto was preaching. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that's exactly what it was. And, but it, it, it's, it, it just shows up. It was almost as if he was he too intelligent was. for his own good. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, I think it was Einstein that said it. Uh, intelligence is the border between uh, sanity and uh, insanity. Mm-hmm. And, and it's totally true. Uh, I mean, so many people that we went over on this podcast so far, some of them were so intelligent that they, they went mad. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even... Because I think with the with with the mass amount of or the massive amount of of knowledge that a person can store inside their brain, I think that at a certain point, once that knowledge approaches a certain line, it it begins to inhibit your ability to rely on faith. Yeah, and you start to question everything. And I mean, we should, I mean, we should be inquisitive. I'm, I'm not discouraging inquisitiveness. We should be inquisitive. We should be able to look for things. We should be able to, to look out and, and, and can wonder, how did that get there? You know, and how do I get there? How do I explore that? No, you're absolutely right. But, the but, thing- but at a certain point, we still have to maintain a certain grounding. You know, it, it for me, you know, I, I believe in heaven and hell. I, I do. And, uh, you know, and I believe that the word of God is, 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 is the ultimate law that we all have to answer to. Do I pretend to know everything? Absolutely not. That's how you get in trouble. You pretend, right? Uh, do I even come close to knowing enough to get myself in trouble? Yeah. There's, there, because there's, there's certain lines they've got, they've got the, uh, Okay, you're just smart enough to know how to breathe. Now you're smart enough to know how to get yourself grounded because you got a smart mouth. Yeah. Then it's that moral you go compass. From there, it is. It's that moral compass now. And then you 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 acquire of enough knowledge where you're you're a, a jack of all trades, so to speak, but really a master of none. And it's just enough. Like I always I always joke. 
that I know just enough Spanish to get myself in trouble at the drive through. Right. Or, or you do what I do is, uh, you, you just come up with a really crazy idea and you have one of your, uh, your, your people that are in the, in the super group while you're on the phone with uh, them, uh, do sex screams while you're picking up your food. It was funny in my head and it was funny when I did it. Well, it's like when my fiance is running through, you know, she's walking through a store, usually with her sister, <laughs> like at Walmart, something like that. Mm -hmm. We always FaceTime. We don't, we hardly, I think I've, I can count on one hand, the number of actual like phone conversations we've had because we're always FaceTiming each other. Yeah. And she's walking through the store and you know, FaceTime it's on speaker unless you have your headphones on. Right. Yeah. So she's in the middle of a busy store like H-E-B or Walmart. And I just, I yell out, penis, just really loud, you know? And she's like, oh my gosh. And uh, <laughs> I would, I would literally scream out. It's like, she's looking at penises. <laughs> no, I will not show you my penis right now, but. You're in fucking Walmart. Why do you want me to show you that now? Well, I mean, to be completely blunt, yeah. I mean, if she asked me to show her my penis, I probably would. But, well, no, in fact, there is no probably about it. I'd be like, here you go. Wah! You know, I'm like, yeah, that's gross. Put it away. Um, <laughs> Here's the microscope camper. Touche. <laughs> um, you know, it is it is a grower, not a shower. Um, oh, that just. Uh, hurry up with are you done or i have a funny thing well no like i'll have my earbuds in and she thinks that she's going to exact some kind of revenge upon me she'll yell out vagina really loud and i'm like babe i've got my airpods in she's like dang it <laughs> <laughs> no uh uh co-worker we were we were going around uh town uh just checking stuff it was uh, it was kind of a busy day but a slow day type of deal mm -hmm. and he was like how do you how do you pick up women oh i just i just that don't care anymore so I just i mean it might be indecent uh uh what is it indecent exposure uh, indecent exposure but you just plop down your fucking dick on the table i mean there, there's ways to do around it man you just don't want to put it down there and there and have it like really it's really cold it's really shrunk you got to get a little bit of like blood pumping into it so you got to start thinking stuff just watching a little bit of extra or seeing like nudie pics and stuff like that and you just give it the thumb roll before you whip it yeah, out. yeah 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 exactly and you just plop it on the fucking table and say hey this is what i'm dealing with do you want it no okay i'll put it back oh you know one of these days, I'm just going to walk up. I'm going to give her the pirate approach. I'm just going to park it on her shoulder like a parrot. <laughs> a small parrot. Oh, it's a wee naked parrot. That's what it is. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> it looks like a dehydrated shiitake mushroom. Oh. <laughs> oh man but uh, uh -huh. um, i guess i guess we're done with we, this we episode. successfully managed to do it we we interject interjected uh dick humor yeah <laughs> into a show about a crazy person awesome yeah. hi ladies <laughs> <laughs> oh to our angry listenerettes how about that yeah <laughs> Boy, i kind of like that because uh, we, we mostly have female audience and you know, I'm it's kind of like seriously surprised for about whatever that. reason the emperor's new groove stuck into my head just now or popped into my head you know where he's like careful the llamas they spit <laughs> <laughs> that was an emperor new groove yeah yeah that was uh that was uh robin williams when he was doing mm -hmm. uh, aladdin wasn't it yeah wait it was why did it was because it was a llama yeah it, no, I, 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 I totally got 
I, he was talking about camels. Camels, yes. But I think that I think the same joke got got put into the it probably groove. did. It probably did. But I, I guess I was yes, like I was hearing. Aladdin, it, my I was boy, like be hearing, careful. <laughs> the camels they spit. Yeah, yeah. I was hearing Robin Williams' voice when you're doing. It. It's like why am I hearing Robin Williams' voice when I hear it? Because. Emperor in a New Groove, Ron William wasn't in it. And I was like, no, oh, wait a minute, David it was Spade. the channel. Yeah, David Spade. All right. But anyways, well. the Unabomber has been done. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Psychos and Sociopaths. I can get you. See what I did there? Yeah. I was trying to end on a good note. Sorry. Yeah. Here we go. Signing off. Ha, ha, ha.